Hi friends, welcome to my Indian travel channel and I am your friend Ravi Chinnakonda. I hope you would have enjoyed watching my earlier videos on travel, food, people and culture. And also I am sure you would have enjoyed watching my earlier episode on Istanbul travel. In my earlier video, I had taken you around some important tourist places in Istanbul and in continuation of that, today I am going to take you, take you around some more tourist places in Istanbul and some special things to see in Istanbul. Come, let's go over to Istanbul now. The weather in Istanbul is generally mild to cold. The best month to travel are May to September. October to April is cold and rainy with chances of snowfall making roads slippery and unfriendly for tourists. Currency used in Turkey is called as Lira and exchange rate of a Turkish Lira to Indian Rupee currently is between Rs 12 to 13. Buying Turkish Lira in India is not only difficult but also expensive. Hence, you can always take the required amount of money in US dollars or euros before you travel. You can convert your dollar and euros into local lira at many places in Istanbul. Like in many countries, you will not get a good currency exchange rate at the airport. So exchange your euros or US dollars into Turkish lira at the airport only for your immediate need. As I had mentioned earlier, almost all the tourist attractions are in the European side of Istanbul. Asian side mostly consists of residential dwellings. However, in March 2019, Turkish government built a huge mosque on top of the Kemilka hill on the Asian side to showcase the country's architectural heritage. To reach this mosque, you need to board the ferry from Eminono going towards Uskidar and this costs just 2.65 lira and once you reach Uskidar, you can board a minibus to Kamilka mosque and the fare for this trip will be only 3 lira. Only for this minibus, you may have to pay in cash and Istanbul cart is not accepted. Situated on a hill at an elevation of about 900 feet, this mosque offers a glimpse of the Istanbul city. The prayer hall of this mosque has a capacity of 63,000 worshippers at a time and is the largest mosque in Turkey. The six towers called the Minars represent the six sets of Islam and its height of 107.1 meters represents the year 1071 when the Ottoman Turks defeated the Eastern Romans called as Byzantines and the 72 meter tall roof of the tower signifies the 72 ethnic groups living in the city. The 17,000 square meter carpet inside the mosque is a specially crafted handmade one and is one of the largest I have ever seen. There are 16 names of Allah inscribed in the interior of the dome representing the number of provinces established by the Ottoman Turks. It is not only a mosque but also comprises of a cultural complex which houses a museum of Turkish Islamic art, a library, an art gallery, a conference hall and its parking area can accommodate more than 3500 cars. This building should not be seen just as a religious monument but also should be admired how one can recreate the grandeur of ancient architecture with today's technology. Also, it will be interesting to note that in a predominantly Islamic country, this grand mosque was designed by two women architects. There was not much tourist crowd in here as not many tourists know about this mosque currently. The drive to this mosque was also pleasant as it passed through the residential areas and cutting across the city of Istanbul. Next, we are moving over to Taksim Square which forms the central business district of Istanbul. You can take a bus from Kamilka Mosque but there is no direct bus. You need to interchange once and this bus ride can take up to an hour. You will be crossing the Bosphorus Sea through a bridge connecting Asia and Europe and crossing a continent by a city bus is an experience by itself. Situated in the European side, Taksim Square is an important tourist, 
ഷോപ്പിംഗ് ആൻഡ് എൻ്റർടൈൻമെൻറ്റ് ഏരിയ ഓഫ് ഇസ്റ്റാൻബുൾ ഫേമസ് ഫോർ ഇറ്റ്സ് റെസ്റ്റോറൻറ്റ്സ് ഷോപ്പ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഹോട്ടൽസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കൺസിഡേർഡ് ടു ബി ദ ഹാർട്ട് ഓഫ് മോഡേൺ ഇസ്റ്റാൻബുൾ ആൻഡ് ഫോംസ് ദ ഹബ് ഫോർ ഇസ്റ്റാൻബുൾ മെട്രോ റെയിൽ നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് ടക്സിംഗ് സ്ക്വയർ ഇസ് ദ സീറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ റിപ്പബ്ലിക് മോണുമെൻറ്റ് ഡിസൈൻ ബൈ പിയേട്രോ കൊലോണിക്ക ആൻഡ് ഇനോഗ്രേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ നയൻറ്റീൻ ട്വൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റ് This monument was set to commemorate the 5th anniversary of the foundation of the Republic of Turkey in 1923 following the Turkish War of Independence. Taksim is a major transit hub and a popular destination for tourists and residents of Istanbul alike. A kilometer long shopping street called Istiklal Kadesi Independence Avenue ends at Taksim Square. Despite being city central area and close to many tourist attractions The prices in restaurants here were more or less similar to those of Chennai. In Turkey, you should never miss eating Dondurma, a Turkish specialty ice cream which is a bit harder and slower to melt. The salesman, who is usually dressed in a Turkish traditional costumes, before giving you the ice cream, plays with it elegantly by tossing in air few times, preventing you from catching the scene. This game itself is an interesting scene. As videography was not allowed in these shops I have shared a link of the video which shows the Dondurma ice cream game in the description section below As a tourist attraction a vintage tram runs from Taksim Square along Independence Avenue ending near the tunnel station from where the second oldest metro rail service 145 years old to be exact starts There are numerous tourism related services restaurants hotels and international fast food restaurants around taxi such as pizza hut mcdonalds subway and burger king it is also home to some of the largest hotels including the intercontinental the ritz carlton and the marmara hotel taxi is also a popular place for public events such as parades new year eve or other social gatherings if you walk around a kilometer on the independence avenue you will reach a nine story tower called the galata tower the tower which is about 200 feet tall was the tallest structure in the city of istanbul when it was built in 1348 and was known as the tower of christ as the tower is built at an elevation of 61 meters that is 200 feet above the sea level once you go to the topmost story you can see the bosphorus sea separating the two continents and a beautiful view of Istanbul city on the top story there is a restaurant and cafeteria which offers view of Istanbul and Bosphorus sea there are two lifts to take the visitors from the ground level to the upper levels and hence there is no need to take the stairs the tower which is around 700 years old was located on a high altitude and hence was used as a watchtower to monitor fire occurrences in the city in olden days the entrance fee for galata tower is 35 lira which is around rupees 420 a short distance from here you will reach the tunnel station from where the world's second oldest metro train which is actually a cable car starts you can click the link in the description section to watch my earlier video on this rail service If you take this train and walk a little bit further you will reach the sea bridge which connects Istanbul's two European areas it's an easy walk as the distance is not too long there are many eateries on the bridge just like in India and this bridge takes you to the Eminönü bus station Eminönü has bus tram ferry and metro stations all in one place and also is always busy with commuters swamping and eateries doing brisk business very similar to india also in the subway there are lot of shops on either side where people buy everyday use things just like you find in any other indian city buses may not be parked in a very orderly way but you can identify the right bus with numbers one big advantage in istanbul is that Turkish language uses English letters which makes us easier to read the names. Now, let's see the Turkish cuisine. The daily food of the people here is roti and bread which is made of wheat. These are baked 
daily in the stores and are bought by women just like we buy vegetables here in addition yogurt and variety of fruits are also consumed the kebab and kofta made from goat meat are the dishes that originated from here and are widely loved by the people baklava is one of the most popular desserts here goat meat is generously used in turkish cuisine fish and chicken were not much seen vegetarians can easily get variety of fruit and green vegetables if you don't like to eat at the restaurants you can always go to the nearest supermarket and buy the vegetarian items you need being a vegetarian i had to do this myself a few times although turkish coffee is famous tea is a very popular drink here and is served black without milk in a beautifully shaped glass since islam is predominant alcohol or pork is not served in restaurants like other western countries next we now move to topkapi palace located very close to the blue mosque it served as the main residence and administrative headquarters of the ottoman sultan in the 15th century 6 years after the conquest of constantinople that is the present day istanbul Sultan Mehmud began the construction of this palace in 1459 AD. Topkapi was originally called Yeni Saray, meaning new palace in Turkish, to distinguish it from the old palace at Bayezid Square. It was given the name Topkapi in the 19th century, meaning the Canon Gate. This complex was gradually expanded after the earthquake in 1509 and a fire incident in 1665. This palace complex comprises of four main courtyards and many smaller buildings. Women of the sultan's family lived in the harem and prominent government officials held meetings for government services in other buildings of the palace. After the 17th century, Topkapi gradually began to lose its significance. The sultans of that time began to spend more time in the new palaces built along the Bosphorus coast. In 1856 the judicial court which was functioning here was also moved to the newly built Dolma Bahai's palace Following the end of Ottoman Empire in 1923 in 1924 the Topkapi Palace was converted into a museum and it is now managed by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism There are hundreds of rooms on the palace complex but only the most important ones are accessible to the public today and the museum's collections include ottoman period costumes weapons armor miniatures religious monuments and manuscripts the oldest parts of istanbul including the topkapi palace blue mosque grand bazaar etc were added to the unesco world heritage site in 1985 the entrance fee for this palace is 72 lira which is around rupees 970 and if you have to go to the harem area also you have to buy a separate entry ticket if you want to visit the palace leisurely you need at least 3 hours of time we now move over to basilica sister which is the largest underwater reservoir built by the romans in the 6th century which is very close to the topkapi palace and the blue mosque The Basilica Sistern or Sisterna Basilica is the largest of several hundred ancient water reservoirs constructed underground in the city of Istanbul which was then known as Constantinople situated next to the Blue Mosque at the oldest Hagia Sophia mosque and church in Istanbul this reservoir was built in the 6th century during the reign of Emperor Justinian of the Eastern Roman Empire called Byzantine Historical records indicate that approximately 7000 slaves were involved in the construction of this reservoir Water supply to Constantinople's old palaces and other nearby buildings was done through this cistern and water to this reservoir came from a distribution center 19 kilometers north in a nearby jungle during those days It continued to supply water to the Topkapi Palace in 1453 even after the conquest of city by ottoman turks however this reservoir is no longer used and is being maintained now as an example of byzantine architectural heritage of istanbul and is open to tourists 
The reservoir is about 138 meters, that is 453 feet long, and 65 meters, that is 213 feet wide, and has a capacity of about 28 lakh cubic feet. This reservoir has 336 marble columns. Most of these pillars are plain without any engravings except for two. On one of the pillars, along with the ancient symbols, there are engravings of tears flowing down. Ancient texts suggest that the tears engraved on the pillars pay tribute to the hundreds of slaves who died during the construction of the basilica system. On another pillar located at the northwest corner of this reservoir, human faces are carved at the base. Purpose for which it was engraved and to whom it refers to also is an unsolved mystery till date. But but it is generally believed that according to the ancient beliefs this engraving was a symbol to drive away the evil spirits from this buildings. But for these two pillars you cannot find any significant marking on any of the other pillars 52 descending stone steps take you down from ground level to the cistern which is usually dark being below ground level making photography a difficult task entrance fee for this monument is 20 lira that is approximately rupees 245 as my visit to istanbul was just 3 days on my way back from europe I couldn't visit all the major tourist attractions of Istanbul. One notable attraction I missed was Hagia Sophia, which was used as a church by Christians and as a mosque by Muslims depending on who was ruling Istanbul then. This attraction also happens to be very close to the Blue Mosque. I would recommend anyone who wants to Istanbul to budget at least 5 to 6 days to enable cover all the tourist attraction of the city. which is a blend of tradition and modernity hi friends once again i am sure you would have enjoyed watching this video please do leave your feedback in the comment section and don't forget to press the subscribe button and also the bell icon to get instant notification on the upcoming videos from my indian travel channel also please do share this video with your friends who may be interested in watching such videos Thanks for all support given to my channel by watching and subscribing to my videos. Signing off now is your friend Ravi Chinnakonda. Bye for now. See you again.